remember correctly, the last video I made, I had an espresso martini, which was a lot more on than the coffee I've got. But that was Christmas Eve last year, a special occasion. I genuinely cannot believe it was Christmas Eve the last time I made a video. Tried thing to say, but this year has absolutely flown by. Unbelievable. So where have I been? It's been about two and a half months since I last made a video. And it's entirely down to the fact that in the background on this, I've been working on improving the sort of nuts and bolts of making videos just to try and improve the quality really. I've done a bunch of purchasing. I've managed to buy myself <clears throat> some new, I've got a new audio interface. I've got a new microphone and I've got a new bunch of lights, which means I now have to try and learn how to use all this stuff. I had to work to save up for this stuff. And it's taken time, two and a half months, funnily enough. Um, but it is all together now. I'm hoping that the next video I do, which I'm also working on right now, is gonna showcase some of these things. And hopefully you'll see the improvement and realize why I've taken a little bit of time to try and make sure the videos are as good as they can be, rather than just keep churning out stuff that's not very good. So it's all a learning process. It's going to keep going. And there'll be fits and starts on this channel, unfortunately, until it really gets going. So apologies, but I hope you'll stick with me because I do have some plans for the channel, which I'll run into in a little bit. And hopefully you'll be in agreement with me that the stuff that I'm going to bring in is going to be worth the wait. So the last video I did, I was looking at... Oh, so I'm looking over there, by the way, because the postman has just arrived. And that noise you just heard should be my World Games Illustrated with the free sprue for the new epic pike and shot on it. So that'd be exciting. Where was I? Yeah, the last video, I was talking about a German bolt action 1000 point list. I was going to paint over Christmas week was my optimistic assessment. It did take a bit longer than just Christmas week. What I found was that my two-year-old daughter decided that sleep was for losers over Christmas. She hasn't really had her sleep recover properly since then. So my painting time was really badly eaten into and it just delayed everything. So that's been a pain, but the army is now done. It is finished. The 1000 point German army is completely finished. I've even had a couple of games with it and as such, I'm doing a sort of a showcase video for the German army. There's been one for the British army already. So it's going to be similar to that, but with the new new kit and the new techniques. So keep your, um, <clears throat> keep your eyes peeled for that one. That's coming soon. But the German army is done. That is the main point. That is the thing I want to iterate to make you aware. I've not just been sat mucking about and doing whatever I want. I have done what I said I would do. So there we are. Because I'm terrible at doing projects. I always wanted to make sure that there'd be one project that I could do. One project, at the very least, at the start of the year, to set me on the road to success. We'll see how that goes. Um, so the future of the channel, I've got a visitor. The internet loves cats. Yeah. Do you love the internet? Anyway, Bond villain time. Feature of the channel. I've been trying to sort of work out where I want the channel to go over the last few months as well. And the big thing I've got to say is that in about a month, I'll be having my second child, which is gonna really eat into my hobby time, absolutely. So the channel is going to be put on the back burner for a little bit. There won't be any videos or any content, probably until summer, midsummer. But my aim is to start getting battle reports on the go. I'm going to have guests on the go. I'm going to have actual segments, talk about interesting stuff, and really just try and grow the channel. I always wanted to do the channel as, it is a hobby thing, 
absolutely it is. But I do want it to be good. And I've got ideas. When I started making videos towards the end of last year, I always felt like they would be sort of practice videos. Just learn what I'm doing. And then I can go on at a later date and start doing it properly. That's what I want to do in summer, start doing it properly. So if there's any kind of content, any hobby content that you would like to see on this channel, that maybe isn't provided by anyone else that you think would be a good idea, please do get in touch, put a comment, put a comment on this video and let me know what you'd want to see, if anything. Otherwise you're gonna be stuck with the ideas I've got going on up here. Might be terrible, so let me know. I'd appreciate that. Um, but battle reports, I think that's where I really wanna go. Mainly because I think battle reports, they're really good fun to watch. And I think they'd be really good fun to set up. I want to get a bit arty. I find myself being a bit of a frustrated filmmaker in the sense that I'm not good at making films. I'm not gonna pretend I am, but frustrated in the sense that I think I have ideas for making battle reports really interesting, but I don't know if they'll work. So I wanna see if they work and you guys are gonna be my guinea pigs and let me know if they work. If it fails, so what? Good fun, eh? So anyway, that's where the channel is at. That's where the channel is planned to be at. And so let's have a look at the new projects I've got going on. I know that I spent a lot of time last year saying, Rogue Heroes, SAS, Desert Italians. And yeah, they're still on the go, but on the back burner because I've just finished a bolt action British army and a bolt action German army. I don't want to do any more Second World War stuff. I'm sort of fed up with it now. Uh, I'll come back to it. Absolutely, I will. But for now, I want to just do some, some new greener pastures, as it were. So I've got a few projects on the go, which are good fun. So the first of those is a saga project. I want to do an Anglo-Dane-Saxon army for saga. I have a friend who's wanting to do Vikings. So it's going to be quite good fun, I think. Um, Saga is something that sort of passed me by until now. And then watching Martin Seventh's son doing his battle reports for Saga has really hooked me in. I think the game looks really good. It actually looks... Oh, sorry, if you see adjusting at the minute, it's because the cat is now there and he is jumping into what I'm using as a camera stand, which is... <clears throat> I expected, given I'm using his stool as a camera stand. High tech stuff on this channel. Saga. I think Saga is a really fun little rule set actually. It's nice, you don't need a massive amount of models and the way that it works, I think is just a really fun, unique system. And actually what I love about it is it's a little bit fantasy-esque. You know, it is literally writing a saga, feats of heroism or what have you, and that just really appeals. I really like that. And I've also been looking for an excuse to do a Saxon project. But everything I've read about that time, Dark Ages in Britain, is that armies were tiny. And that if you have a hundred Saxon peasants on one side and a hundred Saxon peasants on another side, or feared, and they're fighting away, throwing stones at each other and loving insults, and then suddenly 50 Vikings show up, my God, those Vikings are going to tip the balance. And they're like a huge army in the sense that they're actually armoured, well-armed. Saxons don't really have much like that in these local skirmishes that were going on. And uh, so I guess the point I'm making, it's a very long-winded saying of it was really small-scale warfare, which I think is really interesting for a little project. You can almost do it one-to-one. -one. And I think Saga just lends itself to it because for me... The Dark Ages is so steeped in myth and legend now, given the records that we have are so sparse for it, that it is almost like you're just telling a story. It's quite tolkien -y in that sense. It's almost like a folklore, isn't it? So that's going to be a really fun little project. So keep watching back for that. The miniatures I've got, they should be arriving today as well. The annoying thing is I ordered the rule book about three weeks ago now 
and it hasn't even left the factory. Uh, I don't know what's going on with it, but it seems to be sold out everywhere. And I got it from, I, you know, I don't remember who makes it. Whoever it is makes it anyway. I got it from them thinking they'd be the fastest way to get it. And I still haven't had anything, so we'll have to wait and see on that one. But I want to build an army list before I go and put the stuff together. I've got the Victrix plastics, so I've got way more than I need. So I don't want to just go in and build all the Victrix plastic and paint more than I have to. I want to build up a proper army for Saga that I can work towards to get game very quickly. And then a couple of extra little things to have some variety is the way I'm thinking. So I want that rule book basically so I can work out how to be efficient. And until I get that rule book, I, I you know, I'm not gonna work on this, which is frustrating. I wanna get the rules through and get cracking really. But there we are, we'll just have to wait on that. The other stuff I'm working on is I've got a small Wars of the Roses force. Mainly because I've got a friend group who have all got a lot of Wars of the Roses. And so I want to be able to join in rather than just nicking models off them all the time. They all have Yorkists, so I'm left doing Lancastrian. And the colour scheme I really like, and the backstory I really like, is the Percy's of Northumberland. I think they're a really cool. The black and the red looks really cool. So I'm going to go for them. Um... And just basically do one battle's worth of troops for Hail Caesar. And that's it for now. I'll probably come back in a year, two years down the line and add more. But for now, that's all I want to do. Um, that The games that I play with people, that would be more than enough to get going on. So that should be fine. I'm hoping to get that knocked out pretty quickly. I've got a lot of periplastic for that. And they're over in the cupboard that I've got over there. So that'll be done fairly quickly, hopefully. <clears throat> oh, sorry. <coughs> Had this horrible cold, chest infection y thing. I'm just getting over it. It's just lingering. So, oh, sorry about that. Uh, hmm. Right, more projects. I don't know what war game is like. Uh, Anglo Zulu War. That is something. I've fancied doing for years, literal years. And I always told myself that when I got a channel, I would do battle reports for the Anglo Zulu War. I think you can see where this is going. And it got to Christmas this year, and the guys down at my local club said that they were going to start an Anglo Zulu War project. So I thought, this is brilliant, this is the impetus I need jump on that bandwagon. So I have now got a few periplastics and I'm going to work on those. But at the minute, I'm just doing the background reading. I always find with a project, especially one I've had an interest in for a long time, the bit I really enjoy is the research. And so to that end, I've been reading at the minute this. Zulu by Sol David. Uh, I'm not very far through. About 80 pages in, the war is just about to kick off. But what I love about Sol David is just how readable he is. I've read other stuff by him, and he's just, as I said, eminently readable. A lot of historians can be quite dry. I did academic history for a few years, and it was quite dry writing stuff, but this is really good. I would really recommend Sol David. I've had very good reports about that book. I'm enjoying it so far. It seems really well put together. And the other one I'm looking at, which has been really actually surprisingly good, is this. I'm not saying surprising because Osprey are rubbish. I mean, Osprey are great. They do fantastic stuff. But this one, the level of detail that it goes into about the Zulu is phenomenal, including things like how you make their shields and the language, how you pronounce things which I'm still not going to do justice to because it's just I don't think it's things that we have in English like Ketchweo uh, pronounced 
because apparently the C is a noise. So I'm really sorry to anyone who actually speaks Zulu for that. Chatwaya, Chatwaya. See what I mean? It's just like an alien language to us. It's really cool though. It's really interesting how it works. But ultimately, so that is a really good resource. If you have any interest in the Anglo-Zulu war or the Zulu nation, have a read of that one. That's a really good little resource. And actually the Warlord supplement for Black Powder is really good as well. So I've read through that. So I'm still doing a lot of reading for the Anglo-Zulu stuff, but I'm working out what I want to do now. So I think I'm going to do the Battle of Nyazane to start with, River Crossing. And it's just one of those battles where actually the British were, I don't know, maybe a stone's throw away from another Isandwana. You know, it looked like at Isandwana, it looked as though the British might hold on for a little bit until the horns of the buffalo closed. And then the British line just then descended into chaos. And Nizane, it sort of went the other way. It looked as though the British army would collapse and there'd be a second Islandwana within a week. But it ended up holding on and going the other way. And I think that sort of what if, that drama, is really interesting to me. And also, it's not Islandwana. I don't want to do the, the kind of the big thing everyone else does. No Rogue's Drift. I, I will wargame game those out for sure, but I don't want to base my project on those. I want to be different, because I'm special. Mm. Uh, so that's my Zulu War project. Really, really looking forward to that one. The other two, there's two more projects. And the first one was done on a whim, almost. I was at the club, playing a game of six mil black powder in the Sudan. And I loved the scale. I thought, this is really good fun. It's not going to replace 28 mil for me, but it's definitely something I'm interested in doing to get the big, big scale battles on the go. Um, but I was thinking, what, what do I want to do? The Sudan stuff is really good, but I want to do Sudan in 28 mil one day. What would look good in 6 mil? And I just turned to my friend who was sitting next to me. I said, oh, six mil Crimea. And then he turned back and he went, yeah. And so literally that night we were on the Bacchus website working out what we need to do, what we need to buy to proxy the, <laughs> the Crimean war. Long story short, I now have from Bacchus a six mil British army coming and my friend has a six mil Russian army coming. So we will very shortly have a six millimeter Crimean war project. Uh, I spent a good, very happy evening, sat down, looking through the orders of battle for the Alma, predominantly because we thought, again, river crossings are always really good scenarios, I think. So we're going to do the Alma, uh, the start. But the thing with the six minutes, you can have so many that, oh, sorry, you can buy so many for such a reasonable price and so many come in the packs that I can basically do Alma almost one for one, in terms of regiments anyway, and then still have a lot left over. So really, I'll be able to do the Alma and Balaclava as well, um, which is fantastic. So purchased all that, so I'm going to have the Alma, Balaclava, and with those things, I can basically then do Incoming as well. Um, maybe just proxy a few things, but... By and large, being it's just the Crimean sort of expedition force as it was, I've almost got the whole thing, so I can wargame what was there and wargame what if scenarios, and that is just really exciting. I'm really looking forward to that. Naively, I have it in my mind that painting a six mil army will take about a week. I've never done six mil ever, so as I say, probably very naive, but I think about a week. Um, and I'm thinking that actually the way you paint has to change. And I'm thinking really bright colours because otherwise they're just going to become blended in among one another. So they've, got to, they've got to stand out on the tabletop. So bright colours and the basing has to be different. I can't use the normal sand I use because that's just going to look like huge blocks and boulders. And that's just not very good. So... It's causing me actually to think about projects 
in an entirely new way, which is really good fun. I'm really enjoying getting into that aspect about it. And it's really forcing me to think a bit outside the box, I think creatively. And I think it's made me realise that for a lot of my projects, I've been, if not stuck in a rut, recycling the same ideas for a lot of different projects in slightly tweaked just for the different <clears throat> settings that they're in. But ultimately using the same methods of painting, same method of basing for sure. And that's just... It's just refreshing to finally have a project that's forced me to change that and start doing something else and a bit more a bit more out there and a bit more interesting. So that's something I'm really looking forward to. I'm just waiting for backers to make the miniatures now. And then they're going to arrive at my friend's and then he's going to have to come around here and drop them off. Because presumably I'll have a small child at that time eating up all my spare time. So that'll be good fun. And then lastly... But certainly not leastly, I've got something of a nostalgic passion project, shall we say. Um, and that is... This! Yes, The Lord of the Rings. Like a lot of Wargamers my age, The Lord of the Rings was a huge influence on me getting into the hobby. I won't say it was the first thing. The first thing that got me in the hobby was actually Warhammer Fantasy. But when I got into Warhammer Fantasy, it was when The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, had just come out. And when I was in the Games Workshop, I thought, they do Lord of the Rings as well. <gasps> and yeah, it had me hooked from then. And I had those magazines that used to come out, the Middle Earth magazines, had loads of those, loads of little miniatures. I painted them all. And then tragedy struck, which is to say I turned 17, had my first hangover, and I, I, I wasn't successful enough to have had my first girlfriend, but I desired one, and that was the key point. 17-year-old me, not a success with the ladies, spots everywhere, socially awkward, but I did desire a girlfriend and I knew if I was to stand any chance of meeting one, I'd have to get rid of my war games, or so I thought, anyway. And so tragedy struck and they went out into the bin. Yeah, I just binned everything, including all my Lord of the Rings stuff. And I really now really gutted about that. So what can you do other than just start again? That's what I've done. I want to do the Lothlorien Elves, which are out of stock everywhere. Games Workshop gone sell them in the minute. No second party or third party rather retailer is selling them either. And if you go on eBay, you can buy the metals, the old metals that I remember the first time round, but you've got to pay something like 13 pounds a miniature. And I'm, I'm not paying that. I'll just wait for the plastic box set that Games Workshop do to come back in. I don't think those plastics are as nice as those metals were, but they're good enough. I still really like them. So I'm going to wait for that. And in the meantime, I'm working on the Fellowship. I've painted up 12 uruk High Scouts. I've got another 12 to do. And then my friend Miller from Miller's Miniatures, he's got another bunch of uruk High Scouts. And I'm going to put together an Ammon Hen scenario. And I've got all these crazy ideas for a custom bespoke table, doing a river at the bottom putting hills in, having oh, a fully sculpted terrain table. Ah, so I, I'm probably going to have to rein all this in and be realistic about what I can achieve. But I do want a really nice table. This is the project that I think if it takes a long time, but it comes together and looks awesome, that's fine. I'm not going to rush this one. Um, so that's, that's, yeah, that's it. Uh, basically, yeah, that's, so that's, I say that's it. I think this is a 25 minute video. So I apologize for that. Um, I guess the only other thing is that I've been working on actually trying to sort of work out cheeky little speed painting techniques. So I did this ghost. Uh, oh God, where's that focus you think that folks do? You get the gist of what that looks like. This took me sort of 20 minutes 
just cracked out the airbrush, whacked on a, a quick gradient, and then just did some glazing very quickly to bring it up to snuff, as it were. So it's a bit rough around the edges, but it looks okay. And I'm just trying to work out new ways of painting. I think I want to challenge myself, come up with ways of painting that are fast but look effective, to try and, well, firstly, as a commission painter, that's my bread and butter, but mainly because I want to have a style, a style. I, yeah, I see some phenomenal painters out there and I kind of see that a lot of them have got their own unique flavor, their own unique way of painting stuff. And I want to be like that. I want to find my way of painting stuff. So I'm just forcing myself to go outside the box. I go do these six mil, which is forcing me to do some other stuff. Painting up these Games Workshop miniatures that I keep finding on the back of cupboards everywhere and just forcing myself outside that comfort zone of just seeing what I can come up with. Um, so that's a process that's going to keep going alongside those other projects. And in the background, I'm working on improving the quality of the channel. And therefore, I'm hoping in the summertime, when I will be getting at least four hours of sleep a night, that's when I can kick on with this channel and really try and bring it together, really try and turn it into something and try and get it uh, building up into a nice little um, community. So in the meantime, happy wargaming to you all. I hope you all take care and that your loved ones are all well and that you have many lucky die rolls in your games. So until next time, see ya.